everyone, I'm Luke Hector and you're watching The Broken Meeple. This is a YouTube channel about board games where I give reviews, top tens and my honest opinions regardless of the consequences. Get on with it. So today I'm taking a look at Encyclopedia, recently fulfilled on Kickstarter and just come out on retail. This is a game that has definitely had a lot of buzz. This one is getting hyped up by quite a few people lately from initial plays. Although, let's clarify one or two things. I remember seeing comments that this was being compared to Wingspan, particularly by some creators and it's like, um, no, this game is nothing like Wingspan. Get that out of your head right now. Some of these cards have pictures of birds on them. And there is your entire link to Wingspan. Okay, so get that out of your heads. But Encyclopedia is basically a, a kind of, in a sense, a card tableau game. You are researchers going out and researching different animals but the theme is very abstracted it's mainly a mechanical game what you're doing is that you are rolling dice which you draw out of a bag at the start of a turn you roll them and you place them on your player board as such you have four of them you roll them and you choose where you want to put them on the spaces because if you take a die from someone else they get the bonus that's pictured by the die so there's an element of choice there but then what you're doing is that you are gaining cards which have all these different animals on even with the latin pronunciations of them which i cannot pronounce any of them to save my life but each of them has types on them different terrain different climate different food or different animal types and they're from different continents represented by color you build up this tableau of cards in front of you and through other actions you are placing research cubes on the actual cards based on what types you're trying to research ideally you're trying to do set collection so it's about researching a lot of the same type if that makes sense but once you've got a bunch of cards with the cubes on them, you then go and publish your findings, which means that you choose which sets you want. And there's a bunch of these category spaces on the bottom of the board here. Let's see if you can see it in the light or on the photos. But essentially, different ones are worth different points depending on how rare they are. And once you've used the cubes off them, the cards then either go out of play or if they're from the same continent, you can basically say, right, I'm going to put these face down. And at the end of the game, there's some scoring for having a lot of cards for the same continent. To help you on your way though, you've got money which allows you to boost the value of your dice, you've got expedition tokens to boost the value of some actions, you've got special seals which are like almost like jumbo versions of the two I've just mentioned, you know, these are you know worth their weight in gold, but then you can also grab experts which are kind of like little special abilities and bonuses, so your dice, your blue dice are worth more points, you get money every time you go to a certain space, you get points at the end of the game for having experts you get to put two more cubes on a particular category at the end you know stuff like that of which of course you're interested in their color for the continent scoring but also you may just want to get a nice combo of abilities going that help you on your way aesthetically it's definitely a pleaser it looks very nice on the table this is a very big board i mean this is like just it folded up but it really does expand out to a nice long board you've got a beautiful bag with like the sort of like writing and pictures on them the dice are pretty basic but the cardboard token Tokens, a decent quality. You've got free tuck boxes for various tokens that you can assemble, which is a nice little touch. And the artwork on the cards and the box and the rule book is stellar. I really do like the art they've used for these cards. It looks the part and definitely is a pleasing sight on the table. And nothing here feels cheap and chinzy. Solo mode is fine, nothing amazing, but it enables you to play the game solo, so it is in there. Two to four players, yeah. 25 minutes a player? No. <laughs> No, it's not. I played a two-player game of it the other night. It did not take us 50 minutes, and we both knew the rules in advance. That is a stupid time on there. Four-player games of this can easily exceed two hours, possibly longer, particularly if you've got to teach the game as well, to which there's a reasonable amount in here to teach. But yeah, 25 minutes a player is extremely, extremely optimistic. There's no real interaction in this game, apart from the choosing of dice from other players. But then that's the same in two, three, or four. It doesn't matter how many players you've got. But the scaling's really weird with the board because you have a certain amount of cards on offer. You always have the same amount of expert cards, so that doesn't change. The only thing that changes is how many of these animal cards are on offer. But in a two player game, you have six of them out. Three player, you have seven. Four, you have eight. It's incredibly tight having four players choose from eight animal cards, but it two from six? I mean, you've got the world as your oyster at that point. Only one card added per player? That's a really small scaling aspect. It's not that difficult. 
The rulebook and the graphic design on the other hand though does not want to make life easy for you. The rulebook is not terrible, but it is a bit on the wordy side and it also does like to gloss over a few actions and a few definitions without realizing it. It refers to collections at the end of the game and doesn't stipulate what a collection is by definition. So I had to ask a question on Board Game Geek to find out the answer to that and then it kind of made sense. But man, it gave me a headache trying to understand the, uh, the end game scoring at first. But then also the two main actions in this, the, the expeditions and the publications, are not worded the best in there. You'll kind of understand it, but I guarantee you're going to need at least a couple of read-throughs of how publications work before you fully get it because it uses some weird terminology and just doesn't do a great deal of like a good job of explaining it. But the graphic design is a massive issue because when you choose these dice, some of the actions require you to consider the value, some require you to consider the color, some both. But the graphic design on the board is not very clear as to which actions are what, and the game has no reference aids. All you get is this tile here, which you know tells you some end game scoring on one side, and then tells you how a couple of bits of two actions work on the other side. No other reference aid other than the gaming aid on the back of the book, which is all words and frankly isn't the easiest one to refer to. I have improved this game by printing out a list of all the experts and what they do because their list of experts is in the middle of the rule book. What kind of moron decided that was a good thing? But also because I have printed out two reference aids on Board Game Geek, which are a lot better. With this, I know exactly what all the actions do by memory. I can see all the important things, like I need this many points to do this, I need this many points to do that. But most of all, it tells me what dice values are required, what colors I need, and more importantly, it tells you how you spend the coins, seals, and expedition tokens. Because nowhere on the board does it tell you this. So you have to remember a lot of stuff. Your first game is going to involve a decent amount of rules checking. And for a game that's relatively straightforward, you know, a light, possibly midweight game, it really could have done a slightly better job. Just one rules editor look could have solved a few problems here. In terms of replay value, it's lacking a bit as well. I mean, the different cards are just different cards. There's no real sense of, you know, oh, this card's really different from that one. No, it's just what four types does it have, what color it is. It's very abstracted. You're always going to go to these same actions quite a lot. Some of the actions you won't even go to barely. The expedition one to get free expedition tokens. You can get these pretty easily during a game by using reputation and other means that you really don't need to go visit it. But then there's no other way to differentiate players because they give you this pointless little thing to bolt onto the end of your board here and there's nothing to it. It's just a portrait. There's no asymmetric powers or anything, so this piece is completely pointless. So I can just chuck it away and just not even bother slotting it on my board. What was the point of it? Even the past of victory aren't that varied. You know, you've got all these different categories that you have. I mean, there's six of them there. There's another six that you can't see. So there's 12 different categories. You need to think, oh, that's loads. Yep, yeah, the categories are just points. That's it. There's no, there's nothing special about elephants versus meat versus hot climate. It's just a symbol. And the game can say, right, all right, do I diversify or do I focus? You focus, and you focus hard. If you diversify, you will score very few points for the whole majority thing here, the set collection part. So there's no point diversifying. It really doesn't work that well. You want to focus hard on a particular color. So you want to have a lot of green of experts and cards because you know the difference between scoring a measly three points for having a little bit of it versus 40 points for having 12 of it is pretty substantial. But then when you do these categories, you also don't want to do a lot of different symbols. You want to grab a couple and go, right, that's my focus. The last game I took the Omnivore and I took uh, Water Climate. So I took those, or water terrain or whatever. So I took those two, focused on them hard, gained 12 purple cards, and I completely obliterated my opponent. It's you, it's just very one track. It's very one note. A lot of the times I don't even find myself using these seals for some reason, because half the time I build up a decent engine from the expert cards, which are probably the most fun thing in the game, frankly. The fact that you can create these cool combos here. Although again, some of these are more powerful than others. I mean, adding value to your dice is nice, but... Trust me, get the ones that say when you go to get animal cards or when you go to get experts and stuff that you get more money and more uh, reputation. Because trust me, you build up a bunch of those, it adds up. Don't get the ones that add points. No, get the money ones. Because you get a two or three of those. You can basically make those actions such good money generators or reputation generators that the bonuses and the ability to augment your actions you get from there is sick. 
So Encyclopedia is a fine but flawed game. It looks great, not a problem there with aesthetics. It certainly isn't the hardest game to play and it's a relatively easy straightforward game. I just wish that the rulebook and the graphic design made a better job of explaining it without me having to fix the game's issues by grabbing a reference aid, which I'll try to remember to put a link in the description so you can find this yourself because trust me you want it. But the game feels very hollow and samey. The dice aspect of choosing from other boards gets pretty old very quickly. All you're doing is just grabbing cards to put cubes on them and then take cubes off for points. You know, it's very abstracted, so I don't really feel any kind of connection to what I'm doing here. And the balance issues is questionable where, you know, these seals are insanely good. Maxing out the reputation track like crazy gets you a ton of bonuses which are really useful and some of the expert cards are just damn right rubbish versus a few of them which are amazing and kind of I want to get every single game I play. Not to mention that the Pass to Victory is kind of one note because you really are gunning to have a lot of set collection stuff. I find that every time I play this game I'm just doing the same thing every time and for a game that's £55 and you know like quite a you know a big box and that high a price point I kind of wanted a bit more value out of it but as such I feel that I'll play this a few times I've played it enough for the review and now I'm kind of done I give this one a 6 out of 10 overall it's above average I don't think it's bad I was tempted to give this one a 5 but I feel that some of the problems I have are easily fixed. I mean, if you grab a reference off Board Game Geek, it is it does fix a few problems. But again, they could have just made the effort to make it a lot more approachable in that sense. But those as their aspects and the fact that the game just feels hollow does bring it down. I can't give it a seal. I give it a six. I think it's fine but just nothing to really write home about. So that's it for me on this episode of The Broken Meeple. If you like what you see, please remember you can thumb it up on YouTube and Board Game Geek. Please do. It helps to get the video more exposed. But get your comments down below. Do you agree with the points I've made or disagree? I like to read them and, of course, feedback when I can. But until next time, you can check out more content on the channel, including a quick draw review I've done for Marvel United, but also check out the recent top 10 I did where I look at my sort of anticipated games for 2023. Take care, and remember as always, regardless of whether you can pronounce a single name on any of these cards or not, it's still only a game. Bye for now.